Hey guys, so with all the new armor sets coming out, I wanted to do some testing and do some really creative builds, and I've found a really fun way to play the techno, which makes you like a nuke pyro. Nothing is really as satisfying as watching an entire map delete itself before your very eyes. Firstly, my name's Dake, and welcome to Dake's Gaming. I cover a variety of build and guide videos, so if you'd like to see more from me, smash that like and subscribe button. If you want to do me a solid, watch the video in its entirety as it helps promote the video to a wider audience. The build itself focuses on Blightfire which is an improved version of Toxic and what we're going to be aiming to do is nuking an entire room with damage over time through Poison and Blightfire. I've seen Blightfire builds which primarily focus on Blighted Realms but I don't think that's the best way of doing it so let's jump into it. Okay, so let's discuss the premise of the build. We're going to be focusing on the Flame Leper set and the set bonus being that when we apply Toxic three times, it transforms into Blightfire, a stronger damage over time effect. I believe the developers intended this to be a Blighted Rounds build because you can apply Toxic very quickly and you can take advantage of mods like Alchemical Mastery and To the Bone to increase that damage but we're going to be going for a completely different build method. So let's discuss the class tree first. We're going to be focusing on Anomaly Power, Skills Life Leech and ways to increase damage to enemies affected by Freeze. This primarily is going to be where the source of our damage comes from. We use the big nodes Adrenalizing Antenna, Wipeout, Exposing Frost, Damage of Medicine and Overclocked as they all play a key part in increasing our damage too. Adrenalizing Antenna and Overclocked to boost Anomaly Power through use of skills. Wipeout to increase damage against low HP enemies. Exposing Frost to apply Vulnerable. And Doctor of Medicine to increase healing. So keep this in mind as we move into our Pax Tree. On the Pax Tree we aren't using a Capstone as it's not necessary. We are taking Initial Striker from the top and Lethal Devices. Lethal Devices is pivotal in making this build a success because it inflicts toxic when we use gadget skills. On the bottom tree we are using the Undying for increased skill leech if we're missing health, Override for a huge anomaly power hit due to digging so deep into the skill life leech and Apocryphy simply because it's better than painkiller in my opinion. For our ascension points you'll want to be focusing your points on anomaly damage, anomaly power, resistance piercing, skills life leech, status power, cooldown reduction, elite damage, and armor piercing primarily. Extra points should be allocated to crit chance, resistance, armor, healing received, and then after that it doesn't really make much of a difference what you put your points into, so just go with whatever feels best for you. The skills that we're using are Blighted Turret, Cold Snap, and Fixing Wave. You may recall, but there have been a lot of new Fixing Wave mods added, and this has brought some really interesting concepts to the game. More on that after we go over the armor. Moving into the gear, what we're looking for are mods that will bump your anomaly power, increase damage through toxic, blightfire and freeze, increase damage versus elite, improve on your cold snap ability and most importantly focus on fixing wave ability. The mods for fixing wave are 100% necessary and must be used. On the helmet I've decided to go with one which rolls anomaly echo and I got lucky with it rolling Danger Close on as the Apocalypse mod, which boosts my Anomaly power by up to 24% when in close range to enemies. I use Long Winter as well to extend the skill's reach as it inflicts Toxic through lethal devices, which contributes our first stack towards activating Blightfire. The Anomaly's Visage is my ideal helmet because we're using Anomaly power, cooldown and skill life leech, which is key to the damage output. On my chest piece we're running Party Starter and Bed Medicine, along with Icicle Storm. These mods work very nicely together, but we need to go into the way they work. Bad Medicine focuses on dealing damage through overheal in the form of Toxic, which is our second application towards Blightfire, and dealing a small amount of damage for each percentage of overheal. In effect, if you were at 100% health and using Fixing Wave, you'd get a 66% overheal, which would be 660k damage, but if this is in a crowded room with plenty of mobs, that would be 100% more, so we'd be looking at roughly 1.3 million damage 
inflicted on an entire room which simply melts enemies so quickly. On the legs we're using Freezing Boost, Shatter and Virulent Compound. This is simply for damage modifiers but also Virulent Compound is very interesting because elites will explode spreading the status they have to other enemies in a 5 meter radius. This enables you to inflict blight fire onto other enemies quickly if they're grouped up and also adds a small amount of damage too. One important note, euthanizer and radical therapy isn't working correctly with blight fire currently but a fix is coming so when it happens you'll be dealing roughly around 25% more damage so definitely worthwhile keeping an eye out for. On my gloves I've got euthanizer, radical therapy and arms and anomaly. Again, these mods are here to bump damage through damage modifiers to increase the overall damage taken when frozen or when affected by toxic. Arms and Anomaly is a fantastic mod for boosting anomaly power and requires just one critical shot each 6 seconds. On the boots, I've gone for No Resistance Against the Fortified, Toxic Piercer and Unstoppable Force. This for me is a god roll because of how everything works together. So let's deep dive into how these work. For me I have a base 10% armor pierce and resistance pierce through the ascension tree. I've got an additional 10% from no resistance against the fortified and then the 15% from the class tree making up for 35% in total. This now transforms from resistance piercing into anomaly power through unstoppable force providing a further 17.5% anomaly power as a boost. Not too shabby right? Even better you can get weapons which have armor pierce on them and the one I have is truly a god roll. We've got armor pierce and status but rolled on with fortress and mage rage to massively increase our overall anomaly power by up to 65%. Granted mage rage requires critical hits to get there but at the same time this procs arms an anomaly for more anomaly power. My other weapons are damage dealing ones which are focused on killing elites and bosses because Toxic and Blightfire, while they are incredible for wiping a map, aren't really that great for killing bosses just because it's damage over time. If you're going through Trials, for instance, what I do is I use this build for wiping out the enemy maps because it's a lot faster than any other build I've used, and then for the Arbiter rooms I change to my turret build, which you can find in the top right hand corner if you want to check it out. The swap out for me takes less than 30 seconds, as I transmog my armors so I can easily identify which set I'm using and then just change out fixing wave for cryo turret and you're done. However if you're doing expeditions this build is insane and you'll be able to tackle everything easily. Watching an entire map delete instantly is just so satisfying to watch. Let's touch on how to play now. This is pretty straightforward so it won't require much effort. All you need to do is throw your turret to activate that 10 seconds of 30% anomaly power from adrenalizing antenna, activate cold snap to keep them frozen, shoot 4 times with your weapon with mage rage and hopefully fortress on it too, and then use fixing wave. You will want to remember that placement on a map is extremely important. While you have increased range, you want to take maximum advantage of this providing you care about speed. You'll also want to try and be as near full health as possible when you use Fixing Wave, so activating Cold Snap first sets you up for success from the skill's life leech, hitting you at 100% pretty much, and no chance of being hit. That Fixing Wave will then do maximum damage, which should be around 130% more damage overall. For elites and bosses in crowded spaces, this is just about playing smart. Icicle Storm for me deals about 1.5 million damage when an enemy dies and deals area of effect damage so if you're looking at killing those elites quickly try and make sure there are some other enemies around them and you'll be cruising as you watch them destroy themselves. Hopefully you'll have a lot of fun with this build and also thank you so much for watching the video really do appreciate it. If you aren't already subscribed and you haven't liked the video then please do so it massively helps me out and uh, hopefully you'll find some more content from me in the near future which you'll enjoy. Anyway guys, thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care.